Hello, I'm Bridie Lundy. This is Little Red Market Cafe, and it's Sunday, which means it's Sunday brunch. Our Sunday brunch is amazing. Um, Chef John has ruined it for me to ever have eggs Benny anywhere else in the world because that hollandaise sauce is just to die for. He makes it, of course, from scratch. Um, I could I could pour that on anything and I'd be a happy girl. It is so, so good. Um, his eggs Benny is becoming very famous right now. So the bacon Benny with a beer is the best combination in the world. So. <laughs> Bacon Benny is one of our classics that I learned through my chef in Vancouver. Between the homemade sourdough, the homemade hollandaise, it's unlike anything you're gonna find anywhere. I'm John Staschuk. I'm the head chef at Little Red Market Cafe. Um, and I do a little bit of everything. Cooking, plumbing, electrical, gardening, mostly cooking. The type of food that uh, people get when they enter in Little Red's uh, I think we shock people because, you know, during the day we do the awesome sandwiches on homemade bread, uh, you know, soup and salads and um, some really good small bites. But then after five o'clock, um, you get things like duck breast and lamb shank and uh, halibut, stuffed chicken. I mean, I don't think people really realize, you know, what they're really getting into. And when I tell people we don't have a microwave, we don't have a deep fryer and we don't have a grill, they look at me and they think, well, what are you going to serve us? You know, how would you cook food then? So it's really fun to be able to kind of open their minds up and, and let them let them enjoy something that's made just so fresh and, and, and from scratch. I mean, everything seems to be coming out of a package these days, and uh, that's not how we do things. It's a lot of work, but the freedoms it affords are priceless. Having the opportunity to experiment on my own time, at my own pace, it's, I can't, can't put a price tag on that. I bought Little Red Market Cafe um, in July 2012. And at the time, it was a completely different building. Uh, it was renovated too many times, as I like to call it. So there was two false ceilings, tons and tons of layers and layers of flooring. Um, it, needed, it needed to be restored, not renovated anymore. It's been that many times. It needed to be restored. My mom, actually, is a real estate agent in Moose Jaw, and she was selling this building. And she calls me up, and I was just walking downtown Vancouver like I do every day, and she calls me up and she says, Bridie, this place has your name written all over it. And I thought she was completely insane. I uh, didn't think, I didn't, couldn't imagine myself coming back home to Saskatchewan ever. Um, but then I thought about it. Um, there's nothing really keeping me in Vancouver at the time, and I thought it would just be a really cool opportunity. Why not come home? I was missing my family immensely, and um, you know, I, I would love to start something kind of cool. I didn't know what, but I knew it would be fun to, to come and at least try something. I bought the building in July 2012, and I just kind of ran it how the previous owners were running it. So at the time, it was a market. Um, they, you know, there was a liquor franchise, a place for people to get milk, bread, and eggs, and I kind of wanted to sit in it for a while so I could see what did the town need. In September, I decided to gut the whole place. So that meant um, taking down two false ceilings, ripping up, you know, layers upon layers of flooring, and uh, I just stripped it all away. I didn't even have a plan quite then of what I was going to do with the place. I just knew I needed to get rid of everything. I think it was about March when I said, wow, you know what, John would be so good at this. And I call him up and I said, you know what, man, you should come out here and at least just take a look. Just come and take a look at this. So he flies out and uh, it was still the dead of winter, tons of snow everywhere. When I saw the place at first, I said, no, but a couple days, looked it over, thought about it, and uh, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. I couldn't pass it up. I felt that I'd done everything I could do in Vancouver. And yeah, I said, let's roll with it, see what happens. I said, go run with it, do whatever you want. Um, I knew he would be so good here because everything he does is made from scratch. All the bread, all the sauces, all the jam, absolutely everything. What I did do is move to Fernie in early 2000s. 
started on with a new restaurant in Fernie. They treated their employees so well, they treated their food and clients so well, I had no reason to move on anywhere else, so I stuck with them. Spent eight years in Fernie, then moved the whole place to Vancouver, and they said, who wants to come with us? And I raised my hand, and we continued along that, just constantly improving and improving in Vancouver, and then Bridie showed up and uh, figured it was time to leave the nest. The most important part about Red's menu is trying to get as much local as possible. That is so important to us because we live in Saskatchewan. Everything is, is so close by. You can't compare. You can't compare. So much fresher just like it was picked that day and it very may well have been. When you support local, it hasn't sat for weeks on end in a truck. Uh, you, you know, you're getting our eggs are, are, you know, coming right from those chickens and I know how they've been treated. They're, they're happy, they're running around and you can tell when you break open into your Benny and you see the color of that egg, you can tell that was a happy little chicken there. Our most exciting local ingredients would have to be Grandpa's Garden. They are fabulous people. They work so hard. They have absolutely every vegetable and piece of fruit known to man, except for pineapple, because we learned you can't grow pineapple in Saskatchewan, but that's okay. You know it's natural, you know it's organic, you know what's going into it, you know it's a lot of hard work, rather than just picking up something from the store where you're not sure. Yummy. For Chef to be using local ingredients, you can taste it in his food and you can taste the quality. I mean, he's already an incredible chef, so when you add local, it just brings the flavor up even more. Uh, you can't go wrong when you support local and it, you can just taste it. It's really important to us. Once we started serving food, it became trying to achieve a balance between small town cuisine and city style cuisine and make it so that one person can do it successfully. The atmosphere at Little Reds, I would say, it kind of just picked itself because, you know, I would get people from Vancouver, you know, cities coming in and they look around and say, oh, the Edison bulbs and the barn board, well, this is just very, you know, trendy New York, you know. But actually, all of this came from my family's farm. Um, I'm not trying to be trendy whatsoever. This is just my family's heirloom. My family's harvest photos are actually on the wall, and it means so much to me to have that um, there for Milestone and to see my great-grandmother as a little girl just staring at me. It just, it's, really, it's really nice, and it, it, it talks so much about what this place is. It's about roots, and it's how we used to do things back in the day, you know? There was never such thing as fast food when my grandmother was growing up. It was, you know, they baked the bread, and, and they had their cattle, and that's what they ate. And um, they had their garden, and nothing was sprayed. It was just, you know, if there's a weed, you pull it. You don't spray it. So that's how we're doing things. Mm -hmm. For more great food ideas, check out cjcats.com. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local On Demand, write us at max.local at sastel.com. Max TV programming is now available on Max TV On The Go at maxTVOnTheGo.sastel.com. Thank <laughs> you.